prepare our hearts for, with a moment of silence for worship. In keeping along with that theme, our first congregational song will be Draw Me Close. The words are in your bulletin. Please stand as able.
we continue with the call to worship. I lift up my eyes to the hills. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but may have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. Please join me in the confession. Gracious God, we confess that we fail to open to your vision for the world. In our confusion amid all that is unfinished in our lives, we close ourselves off from where and how your spirit calls. Forgive us and open our hearts and minds so that cross-marked and spirit-sealed, we may live into the new life you have bestowed upon us for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, has come to us in Jesus, who by his holy cross has redeemed the world. Buried with Christ by baptism into death, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Cross-marked and spirit-sealed, you are raised to new life. Almighty God, strengthen you in faith to live each day renewed in God's call for your life. Amen. Pray together. Open the eyes of our hearts to the mysteries of your saving love, O God, that we might grasp the hope to which you have called us. Give us a bold understanding of your unfolding vision for us and for your world. Accompany us on our seeking journey and lead us to where you would have us go. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4a. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, 
and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And you, all the families of the earth, shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm, please read responsibly with me, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Our second reading is from Romans 4. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to the one without works, trust him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to the descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is the null and the promise is void. For the, laws, for the law brings wrath, but there is no law, that neither is there violation. For there, this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be granted to all descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom we be he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's a little better. At least I got a couple of you to say good morning. We're getting there. All right. Well, today's lesson is about one of the best known scripture verses. John 3.16. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Does it? If you go to the Bible and find it, it's in there. Do you know what it is? Mm -hmm. Wrong, Wait. John. Wrong John. Well, it's, no, it's not that John. Never mind. <laughs> well, let me tell you what John 3.16 is, and maybe you'll remember hearing it before. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes him, him, in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Once you hear it, you, you remember it. Yeah, it's one of the, you know, you see it all over the place. You see it at football games. You see it everywhere, that verse. But the reason this verse is so well known is because it sums up God's love and tells us why Jesus is so important. You want to hear that verse again, why it's so important? No. Well, we're going to hear it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. That's a really, some really important words right there. Yeah, well, I have a slip of paper that I'm going to give each of one of you before we go. And it says, John 3, 16. So you can take it home with you, and you can ask your parents to help you find it in the Bible. Oh, some of these words? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're missing a letter in there, though, aren't we? Yeah. 
I know. I know. And I, so I have each one, one for each of you before you leave, so you can take home and you can look this stuff up. So we're going to talk about, a little bit about this verse together. The first part says that God loves us. He loves the whole world. He loves the world so much. He still loves us. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And he loves the world so much that he gave his only son to live with us. To live with us on earth. To be like us. We talked a lot about why Jesus came to be with us. We've talked a lot about this. And he came so that he could walk among us, like I said, and live as a man. He is up there. That's a pretty cool picture. By doing that, God could know exactly what it was like for us to live our lives. He, he, he walked around like we did. Okay? And then the last part of that verse reminds us of that if we believe in Jesus and follow him, we won't die, but we'll have eternal life. Now, do you know what that means? It means we'll live forever. Not on earth, but eventually we all die. Eternal life is what we have when we go to heaven. Our bodies may die, but our spirits are resurrected to live forever with God. That's pretty cool in heavenly kingdom. We don't just stop being when we die. The part of us that makes us who we are, our spirit, our personality, our thoughts, those things, they last forever. When we trust in Jesus, follow him and put him first in our lives, we can receive the best gift of all. We can know that we're going to be close to God forever. Isn't that pretty nice? Yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's hold our hands and bow our heads, okay? Even though you can't see him, yeah. He's still there, honey. Yeah. Okay, he's there. He's here. All right, dear God. Dear God. You love the world very much. You love the world very much. You sent Jesus to show us how to live. You sent Jesus to show us how to live. And how to know you. How to know you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ready? Amen. Amen. All right. Here, you guys want one of those? As you're pa passing those out, I'll say that um, we had a good theological discussion going on up here, asking questions. And that's when you listen to the gospel, that's what Nicodemus is doing to grow in faith. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, 
no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Please be seated. So the sermon for the second Sunday in Lent is entitled, Called to Openness. This year for the 40 days of Lent, our theme is Unfinished, Discovering God's Call in the Not Yet. For us, Lent is 40 days to wander, 40 days to die to self, 40 days to grow stronger, 40 days to remember the Paschal sacrifice, 40 days to discover Jesus' passion calls us to new life. Anytime you hear the number 40 in the Bible, take notice. It says, this is important, people. The number 40 appears 177 times in the Bible. For example, Noah and his family were on the ark at the beginning of the flood, and it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end, they were wanting to get off the ark, and they had to wait yet another 40 days to get off. Then talk about being open to God's call and the not yet. Abraham had to wait till age 100, and Sarah was 90, when they as a couple finally had their first and only son. I can't imagine having your first kid at age 100. Named him Isaac. Then to top it off, Isaac did not get married to Rebecca until he was age 40. So they had to wait even longer to, for God's promise to continue. Also, Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights when God gave the Ten Commandments. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, discovering God's call in the not yet. Three of Israel's most revered kings, David, Solomon, and Josiah, each reigned 40 years. Last week, we heard how Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and was tempted by Satan. And then I'll say this today, March 5th is Trisha's and my 40th wedding anniversary. Not that it has anything to do with the Bible. We're going to get together a family later today. But over the last four decades... We both have had to be open to many new and challenging things in our life together, which goes along with the theme, often surrounded by the not yet and the unfinished. In today's gospel, Nicodemus struggles to understand God's unfinished promise. And he's open to the possibility that Jesus just might be the one to fulfill God's unfinished promise. It is in this stealthy nighttime encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus that we have one of the best-known Bible verses. Lutheran professor and pastor Mark Ellingson says, Martin Luther called this text the gospel in miniature. Of course, as it's not easy to believe this wonderful love of God, Luther adds, 
that faith in the crucified Christ should bring certain salvation and deliverance from sin and eternal death is something that human reason cannot understand and conceive of. Therefore, the word must be preached without ceasing and this article effectively driven home in order to fortify ourselves against the misgivings of our reason. So keeping in mind this insight about how surprising it is that reason and logic that God loves us like John 3.16 proclaims may help us to make God's love more important in our lives, more joyous. Surprises have a way of doing that to us. It is as British-American anthropologist Ashley Montague once put it, the moments of happiness we enjoy take us by surprise. It's not that we seize them, but they seize us. Ellingson concludes, we do not choose God's love. He, cho he chose us. That's why our first and second readings today are paired with today's gospel. It's about God choosing Abram and Sarai, just like Jesus calls Nicodemus to be open to the unknown and the not yet. In a commentary entitled, Doing What is True, Presbyterian Pastor Chris Keating says, Nothing tells us what God saw in Abram, or why the Lord chose him to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Left unsaid in Genesis is what made Abram a likely person to answer God's calling to leave the familiar for the unknown or whether Abram took some time to consider his options. It's a cut and dry choice. God called, Abraham followed. Look at the verbs, Anna Carter Florence once says, and you'll find out what the text is trying to say. That's true in this short passage from the larger life of Abram and his wife Sarai. The verbs dominate. Abram is told to go, and God will show, make, bless. In the space of a very few verses, Abram is born again. He leaves behind all that he has known in search of something he cannot see and even begin to understand. I'm going to add, I always wonder why God chose Abram at, at his age. He'd been about 75, and he's still living in daddy's house. God chose Abram and Sarai. Life involves what is true. In fact, as Jesus explains to Nicodemus, doing what is true is the result and purpose behind being born anew or being born from above. No blazing fire, no divine appearance, no mythical, mystical, myth, mythical apparition. As we sang in our opening song, it's simply taking the steps to be led closer to God. Keating says that that's hard to understand. Consider the life of former President Jimmy Carter, who recently elected for hospice care. Carter, age 98, once described by journalist E.J. Dion Jr. as being as a religious a president as we've ever had. Carter raised eyebrows among the political establishment when he proclaimed himself a born-again Christian in, during the 1976 North Carolina presidential primary. Americans, wearied by President Richard Nixon's scandals, identified with Carter's down-home faith and his promise to never tell a lie. According to his longtime attorney, that promise cost him the liar vote. This is not to raise Carter to the status of biblical patriarch. Even his fans will say that while much of his presidency has been underrated, some of his greatness as a retired president has also been overrated. But Carter's life is filled with examples of what it means to take steps into the unknown. Like Abraham. He faced overwhelming odds and improbable chances to succeed. Raised in a small town, 
he headed to the Naval Academy to pursue a degree in engineering. After Annapolis, Carter and his wife Rosalind followed the typical naval officer trajectory and crossed around the nation. After serving in the Navy's fledgling nuclear submarine program, Carter returned home to Georgia. It was not what his wife Rosalind wanted to do. But his father had died. And he was needed to run the family farm. The rest, as the story says, goes, is history. Concludes Pastor Keating. So putting aside partisan politics, Jimmy and Rosalind were open to their unfinished life in the unknown and not yet. At age 75 and 65, Abram and Sarai were open to where God was calling them in their unfinished life into the unknown and not yet. And it's going to take a long journey. They left their home to follow God's call, which included giving them new names of Abraham and Sarah. You and I are also called by God. Called by God. In the sermon prep material for this series, it asks two key questions about our being called to openness in the not yet and unfinished parts of our lives. What does this text from John 3 say about Jesus and say about God? What does the text say Jesus and God is? What does it say about them and who are they? As we ponder these questions, here are a few important points for us to ponder. One, Jesus meets us in our wondering Jesus can handle our questions. Three, Jesus meets us in our questions. Four, Jesus is the one lifted up on the cross. Five, Jesus is the one lifted up from the grave. Six, Jesus is the one lifted up in the ascension. Jesus is the one given by God out of love for the world. And my favorite, eight, Jesus does not condemn. It also says in the planning material for our Lenten series, every day of our lives we are asked or expected to be open to different things, circumstances, experiences, or people. Some are rather minor. Am I open to trying a food I've never eaten before? Some foods could change your life. But am I open to considering a perspective that is different than mine? Am I open to a new job opportunity that presents itself? Am I open to forgiving someone who has harmed me? Am I open to changing my plans to accommodate another's needs? Am I open to imagining that God is up to something around which my head can't quite wrap? In the story of Nicodemus, we encounter an unfinished person of faith who is desperately trying to be open to understanding what God might be up to in Jesus. Amid his wondering confusion, Jesus meets him. Amid our own wondering confusion, Jesus meets us. Amen. This is a song that we have done as a prelude for the last few years. We haven't done it with the congregation, but it should sound somewhat familiar to you. So please stand and join us for 40 days.
we have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. O oh God, you so, so loved your church. Raise up leaders who care for your people. Bless the theologian, seminarian, and college professors, and all who are called to the ministry of teaching, that they form and inspire us to work of the gospel, work through the ministry of your people, especially all disciples and congregations throughout the world in the ELCA. LRI Lutheran Parish, St. Matthew's Care and Share Fund, and the Bureau County Food Pantry. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your creation. Guide the work of researchers, scientists, and activists who love your earth and who inspire us to care for the natural world. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love the world. Uphold leaders who resist tyranny and oppression. Strengthen organizations that promote peace and harmony. Direct their work to alleviate human suffering and to address its root causes. Watch over those serving overseas, especially Kelsey and Dylan. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your people. Draw near to all who live with mental illness, depression, or addiction, and accompany them in healing and recovery. Hear the cries of those who look to you in their distress, especially Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Terry, Dick, Irma, Jim, Porter, Marilyn, Lydia, Jennifer, Libby, Dana, Deb, Scott, Braden, Gary, Lisa, Loretta, Elizabeth, Rita, Beth, Tim, Samantha, Lewis, Tom, Harlan, Dave, Donna, Steve, Terry, Sandy, Alan and Becky, Marilyn, Boris, Lisa, Natalie, and all victims of disasters and violence and war and those still feeling the impact of the pandemic. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, you so loved your children. Bless the young in our midst and delight us with their joy, wonder, and curiosity. Revive our ministries with children and youth and equip all of us for faithful discipleship. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your saints, as our ancestors in faith have been a blessing to us. So inspire us by their example of holy living to be a blessing to those who come after us. Comfort the grieving families of Marilyn and Corey. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole world, your whole creation, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Please be seated now as we receive our tithes and offerings to give to God that is used for the work of ministry that begins here and goes throughout all of God's world that God so loves. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open me. 
invite you to stand as you're able. Let us pray together. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join in the Lord's Prayer as printed on page 13. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Communion and week by continual flow. The usher will form a single line in the middle aisle. Inside, come to me for the um, bread and to the outside corners to get the white grape juice or red wine and return to your seats in the outside aisle. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Please be seated.
Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. As Catherine comes forward for announcements, I have a couple to share. On Palm Passion Sunday, which is April 2nd, we're going to have a reader's theater, I guess you could call it a reader's um, parts, like we've done in the past. We haven't done this since before COVID. Um, where we'll need about half a dozen to eight people who are going to read different parts of the long gospel. There is a sign-up list out in the narthex. Um, the, Jesus, the narrator, are the two longer ones. Peter is the next longest, and the other ones I follow after that are all sh- short, have not a lot of reading, just a few lines. Also know that the Saturday before April 1st, you would need to be able to come to a practice at 10 o'clock. So having said that, please consider that. Also, um, you gave the council your your authority to find voting members for a Senate Assembly and South Conference meeting, which is at the end of this month. South Conference is the end of this month, and um, the the Northern Illinois Senate Assembly is in June. We need, really quickly here, one voting member who's a male, Another voting member who's a female, and because of our size position in the Northern Illinois Senate, we have the option of a third adult, either male or female, and one young adult, or they could be a confirmed teenager, somebody under the age of 30. So we have four spots we need to fill. 
Um, so if you're being, feeling called by God after the sermon today, just think of poor Nicodemus and Abram, okay? Um, it won't be quite that bad of a deal for, for you compared to what they had to go through. So um, consider that and get a hold of Nate as president or myself or a council member and let us know, please. Catherine. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We are in need of volunteers for food for Corey Stocking Celebration of Life for this Saturday, March 11th at 11 o'clock. You can see Terry Rapp after worship today if you are able to help with that. Come join us at the midweek Lenten worship on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. during Lent. All ages are also invited to try our Lenten prayer um, labyrinth that's set up downstairs. What room would you say that's in? Back in the corner, but we use for the Back in the corner. So find that labyrinth. And actually, Pastor said he had candles down there, and I thought that would be really neat at nighttime to try that labyrinth out. So try they're, that. They're battery candles. Right. Yeah. No, no fire. <laughs> <laughs> Youth and family are hosting soup suppers each Wednesday at 6 p.m. before the midweek Lenten services. The suppers proceed benefit youth and youth outreach at St. Matthew's. If you are able to help bring soup, bread, and or dessert, there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. And I think everybody who did come out on Wednesday and supported us, that was very nice. Um, there will be a First Communion instruction Sunday, April 2nd at 1 p.m. Both parents and students would need to attend this. A First Communion would be held at 7 p.m. then, Monday, Monday, Thursday, worship, um, April 6th. Youth, check out the spring retreats being held at LMO, LMOC. Grades 3rd through 6th will be March 24th and 25th. Grades 7th and 8th are April 14th and 15th. Come see me if you are interested in attending. I have plans to go to both retreats, so looking forward to that. Also, Sunday school will meet today at 1015 downstairs in the Sunday school room. Confirmation will then meet by Google Classroom today. That is everything. Thanks. I invite you to stand for the benediction. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. I know you know this song, so join with us.
go in peace, serve in love. Praise be to God.